welcome you to the memorial service for George Taylor. Uh, I know you were here obviously for the funeral of George Taylor, but most of you here know very well that uh, there's probably not enough information that we can say that we're all aware of. We're here to remember her. So, uh, as, we, uh, as we begin, let's start off with a word of prayer. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for a life well lived. We thank you for the, the fact that you're the one who empowered that life well lived. And we thank you, Lord, that she is now seeing you face to face. And I pray that as we proceed through this funeral service, this memorial service, that we will mourn the loss of a loved one, but at the same time, we'll have joy remembering the good times, remembering what you've done. In Christ's name we pray, amen. Well, we're going to sing a congregational song together, uh, Amazing Grace. The words will be up on the screen. Most of you saw the obituary already, but I want to read a portion of the obituary to you. Dorothy Rebecca Boltz Lermore Coyle, 83, of Culpeper, Virginia, passed away on January 1st, 2022, at the UVA, UVA Culpeper Medical Center. She was born on March 10th, 1938, in Martinsburg, West Virginia, a daughter of the late Howard William Boltz Sr. and Flora Henshaw Boltz. In addition to her parents, she was preceded in death by her first husband, Joseph A. Laramore Jr., siblings Howard, Helen, Ann, Don, 
and Paul. Dorothy earned a Bachelor of Science degree from Shepherd University and a Master's degree in Library Science from Syracuse University and retired after working as a librarian at Anne Rundle County, Maryland Public Schools. She's a lifetime member of the National Society of Daughters of the American Revolution, William Henshaw Chapter. She's survived by her husband, Forrest E. Coyle, twin sons, David A. and Daniel L. Larimore, a stepson, Floyd Coyle, a sister, Jean, grandchildren, Joshua, Peyton, Madigan, Hope, Grace, Lindsay, Clayton, and Colton, and a great gun, a grandson, John Calvin. I like that name, by the way, John Calvin. So you know the thing about an obituary, you, you read the obituary, and it's like just an outline, isn't it? Have you ever gone to a class, and they hand you an outline, and you think, boy, there's not much here. And then they start talking, and you realize, there's a whole lot here. And that's, that's what an obituary is. It's just an outline, because there's so much color, so much life so many wonderful things that happened in between the birth and death and it adds heat to the coldness of the facts of an obituary and so uh, at this time dan and david are going to share some some memories of their mom and and memorialize their mother Thank you all for being here today. First thing I'd like to do is I'm going to read a letter from a very special, special young lady, uh, Vicki Lynn. Um, Mom met her 41 years ago. And um, I'm just going to read what, what she had to say. Where do I start? Forrest, you have lost your love and now have a guardian angel. Dave and Dan, what a special mom. I can't even imagine how you both feel. As for the grandchildren, I can understand. Our grandparents are, special, are such a special part of our lives. Most of you may not know me very well. As for Dorothy, or as I still refer to her now, Mrs. Coyle, I was a girl she met when I was in fifth grade at Point Pleasant Elementary School. I had a pappy in Pennsylvania who was the only person who cared about me. Mrs. Larimore at that time stepped in and showed me that someone else cared. I spent many long nights on the telephone talking to her and many days in the school library helping her. She truly saved my life. I am so very thankful for this wonderful lady. This all happened 41 years ago. That is a long time and we have remained close over all these, all these years. Mrs. Coyle has always welcomed me into her home in Culpeper. I will truly miss this wonderful person that helped me navigate this life and helped to turn me into the person I feel I have become. I am most thankful she got to meet my adopted mom, Linda, who is here with her today. These two people have been the biggest blessings in my life. She will be remembered and remain in my heart forever. Until we meet again, love always, your girl, Vicki Lynn. What do you say about the woman who means more to you than anybody else in the world? She was always there. She modeled the life that she wanted Dave and I to have. She was devoted as a mother and as a wife. She invested in those around her and the evidence Vicki just shared. Um, she was all about family. All about family. Whether it was the Boltzes, 
in the Henshaws in West Virginia, whether it was the Laramores in Delaware, the Laramores in Annapolis, the Coils, as she remarried Forrest, she was a devoted mother and wife. Um, she invested, like I said, in those around her. She gave of herself. She gave her time. Her happiest moments were with family. Thinking back to the times in Martinsburg, you know, sitting around the table and being there, and her Aunt Jean will remember the three-hour goodbye. It would start out. They would go to the bathroom, so you knew it was going to start. And then I remember when Dave and I were little, we, we got tricked a couple times because, you know, you would go to the, they would go into the bathroom, and, and then they'd stand outside the bathroom. And then they'd work their way down the hallway. And, you know, two hours later, you know, we're still saying goodbye. Um, but uh, the, uh, those, those memories, the memories that she had with her sisters and her brothers that would come to Culpeper, they would go to the beach in Bethany. Um, they, spent, they spent time together. Um, that's when she was her happiest um, with, with family. Um, for Dave and I, she was our defender. She devoted everything for us. Even um, here at the end, it was amazing to walk in with her to the doctor's offices. And the doctors would tell us, and the, the uh, receptionist, oh, you're, the tw you're one of the twins. You must be the twins. That's all she talked about. She was, uh, until till the end, she was the proud mother, proud mother of twins. Um, she found joy in people. She was the anchor in our family and, um, you know, a true blessing from God. Um, she's the one that pointed Dave and I towards Jesus and made sure we had that influence in our lives. Um, and so it's neat to see things come, come full circle. The other role, she, she had many roles. The other one that I, I should have mentioned before is as a grandmother. Um, she loved all of her grandchildren, and she enjoyed spending time uh, with them. Uh, she and Forrest were able to do lots of traveling. You know, we used to, we were growing up, we did a lot of camping with our family. We had a pop-up. We made fun of the people in the RVs that wasn't camping. They had air conditioners. Um, she later decided later in life after meeting Forrest that she was mistaken. Um, <laughs> that the RV was the way to go. And they traveled to all 50 states, Canada, went on numerous cruises, and they just enjoyed uh, their life together, their uh, second chance at uh, love and um, you know, continued family. Um, they always made time to be home, to be around for the, the uh, kids' sporting events, dance recitals, graduations, whatever momentous was going on, mom was there. Um, and you know, so she was, she was dedicated. I have a good friend here who impressed upon my heart many years ago. Nothing happens by accident. Everything's intentional. You want to have a good family? Be intentional in raising your family. And that's what mom and dad did. They were intentional. We spent lots of time together. It was the four of us. And like I said, we are the fruit of that. While we are sad that she is gone, we know where she is. And we rejoice. She's no longer hurting. She was a woman of great dignity and grace. And lately, you know, the last several years, you know, her, her health robbed her of that but she still maintained that dignity and grace. Um, so I would just encourage all of us, while we are sad, she's no longer here. We will see her again. She has received her inheritance. She is with Jesus. She is where she wants to be, where we all want to be. She is there now. She is running jumping, singing, 
doing whatever in the presence of our Lord and Savior. And um, she has been fully healed. Um, the greatest joy of my life was being able to spend these last two years with her. To just encourage her, support her, the way that she has done for me all of my life. And so the woman who helped lead me to Christ, point me to Christ, I was able to, as her mind was fuzzy and not being able to remember things, to be able to point her back to Christ and remind her of the promises of the gospel that she treasured so much. Um, and so just a couple things. Aunt Jean, a couple weeks ago, she was so happy she couldn't wait and call you on that great day when the Redskins, yes, the Redskins, beat the Tampa Bay Bucks. <laughs> Mom was so happy and could not wait to call Aunt Jean. She knew it was just a regular season game. It didn't have much significance. But she was happy that the Redskins, she could talk a little trash to her older sister. Um, as mom had trouble moving, standing, I don't know where it came from one time, it was just, she'd be trying to stand up, and I would just start telling her, stand up for Jesus, stand up for Jesus. And whenever I said that, she always did. She always did. The caregiver, several of the caregivers shared that they actually, after hearing me do that, they would do that with her as well. And, um, you know, and even here, this, these last parts, um, and I'm wrapping up. I know I'm, I'm rambling. Um, the um, Her two biggest thoughts were always how was Forrest doing and wanting to make sure that he was taken care of and then wanting to make sure that she could still mother Dave and I the, until, until the very end. So I just want to um, share, I'm sure a lot of you know this song, this is a song that I shared with mom back in the summer when it came out, and um, it had a lot of, a lot of special meanings. Um, casting crowns, scars in heaven. And this, I know the road you walked was anything but easy. You picked up your share of scars along the way. Oh, but now you're standing in the sun. You're, you fought your fight and the race is run. The pain is all a million miles away. The only scars in heaven, they won't belong to me and you. There'll be no such thing as broken, and all the old will be made new. And the thought that makes me smile now, even as the tears fall down, is that the only scars in heaven are on the hands that hold you now. Alleluia, alleluia. And, uh, I would just encourage all of us, mom lives on in each one of us. She impacted everybody here in their own way of how she knew them. And so when you think of mom, think of Jesus. Because that's where she is, and that's what she would want. I only have one page. There's lots of things that come to mind when you think of your mother. She's the one that held you in her body and brought you life from the very beginning. As Dan shared, um, my mom was everything to me. She was the quiet strength. She was the soul of the family. Her sweet spirit permeated everything. She was always there with a kind word, a gentle word, an understanding word. As a librarian, she used to bring home lots of books, and we'd read lots of books when we were younger, and she would share different ones. 
I'm not sure how many years ago, she brought a book home, and she gave Dan and I a copy of it. And it said, the name of the book was Love You Forever. And it talks about a mom having a baby, how the baby would run all around and do crazy things. And later on here today at the, re at the reception, the book is here. But the, the chorus of the book, or the refrain, was the mom would hold the baby and say, I love you forever. I'll like you for always. As long as I'm living, my baby you'll be. We were always her babies, the two of us. Of course, I'm the older one, and he's the younger <laughs> one. But it's just the way it was. But, but as, as the baby got older and grew throughout the book. Mom got older too. And then the refrain became, I'll love you forever. I'll like you for always. As long as I'm living, my mommy you'll be. And these last three years for mom were very difficult, especially the last year. And, and Dan and I were able to assist with some of her caregiving. And, um, you know, mom always thought that we were doing too much. And it's like, mom, there's not too much that we can do for you. There's nothing that we would do. And the other thing that I'd like to share is best um, in a song by the Newsboys called That Home. I think they're going to play it right now. There was a home in town Where broken kids, the lost and found Would come for miles around Just to see what love was all about Cause mama had a way of making things okay She'd cook us our favorite meal Sit and listen to how we feel Oh how the pain was real How many families would the devil steal Mama had a way of making things okay In that home We knew we were safe To be young enough to dream Find the faith to believe And in that home Love it had no end It's where we learned to in that home Mama always had the music on Sometimes loud, sometimes soft When I asked about her favorite song She opened the Bible to the book of songs She always found a way Talk about grace And in that home We knew we were safe To be young enough to dream Find the faith to believe And in that home Love it had no end That's where we learn to forgive in that home and On that day I got the news That mama's stay here was almost through I stayed all night by her side Held her hand, looked in her eyes And said, mama When you're home I know you'll be safe Strong enough to see the faith that you believe and in that home life will have
have no end I know I'll see you again In that home In that home In that Some 12, 14 years ago, Dorothy asked me if I would sing at her service. And so here I am, Dorothy. <laughs> Hard to follow professionals, but I'll do the best I can. When Dan was given his eulogy, Dan and Dave, they spoke of Forrest and Dorothy traveling in their RVs and how they had seen all 50 states and so I'm going to sing How Great Thou Art. It speaks of the beauty of the world in which God has created for us. Even on this cold, crisp day, when you leave, just take a look at that view right across from this facility. It's beautiful. And so in everything, not just in God's creation, but in the relationships with one another, we have so many reasons for thanksgiving and to say how great thou art.
Christ shall come with shout of acclamation and take me home. What joy shall fill my heart? Then I shall bow in humble adoration and One of, well, the boys shared with me that Dorothy had a, a couple passages that were her favorites, and one of them was Psalm 23. And I don't know if you've ever thought about Psalm 23. We we tend to focus right in the very middle, but have you ever really read it? It's it's a sheep talking. The Lord is my shepherd. The sheep is talking. David wrote that. The Lord is my shepherd. And this is important because if you think about it, if you take on the viewpoint of somebody who does not know the Lord and you start to look at how big the universe is, it makes you feel small and insignificant. As a matter of fact, David, the psalmist who wrote uh, Psalm 23, said this in Psalm 8. He said, when I look at your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon the stars which you have set in place, what is man that you are mindful of him and the son of man that you care for him? And that is the, the tension that we feel as children of God. You have the, the uh, eminence of God, the closeness of God, right? The Lord is my shepherd. And at the same time, you have this transcendent, awesome great power, where we're so privileged that way. But the psalmist said, the Lord is my shepherd. And there's actually a lot of significance in that verse. Think about what he said, the Lord is my shepherd. And listen to what Jesus said in John chapter number 10. He said, I am the good shepherd. And then a few verses later, he said, my sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. I give them eternal life. And so here is David, a thousand years before Christ was born, professing his relationship with Christ. The Lord is my shepherd. And Christ confirmed that in John chapter 10. It's interesting about sheep. I don't know how much you know about how they tend sheep in the Middle East. But in ancient times, Families who owned sheep generally owned between 15 and 20. That was about an average. Or I should say their, their flock was 15 to 20. They usually had a couple goats in there as well. But when a, when a lamb was born, this is the important part. When a lamb was born, the shepherd would take the lamb every morning and check it. And he, he would pick the, sheep, the lamb up and check it for defects, see how it's doing. And the whole time he was talking to that little lamb. And over time, that little lamb would learn the shepherd's voice. And so in the wintertime, often sheep from several different families would be kept overnight in a common pen. In the morning, the shepherd would come to the gate and call the sheep. And only his sheep 
would respond. Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice. Dorothy knew his voice, didn't she? In a way, she was like her shepherd as well. Because I, I think all of us can see that she shepherded her twin boys, didn't she? And I think probably more than anything else, she wanted them to know Christ. I think that was most important, just listening to how they talked. But from a young age, she began to train these boys to hear the, shepherd, the good shepherd's voice. She was, a, she was a school librarian, so the shepherding didn't even stop at home. You, she loved the children and she shepherded them. We just heard testimony that up until the day she died, she communicated with one of the little children in that that would come to the library. And so she shepherded children. Have you ever noticed that in Jesus' ministry, he um, never seemed to be in a hurry? Never seemed to be in a hurry at all. He always had time for people. And Dorothy imitated the Good Shepherd, her Savior, because she always had time for people, didn't she? People were very important to her. And while this is all well and good, life is not always a bed of roses. In the middle of Psalm 23, verse number four, David said this, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Dorothy walked through the valley of the shadow of death too. Many years ago, when her first husband died, she walked through the valley of the shadow of death. It was, it was shadowed over her household. And that was not a good time. We, we live in the United States of America where if most people who are, are religious, it's a more of a deistic type religion. And so they take on the idea that when bad things happen to people, the assumption is that God's not happy. I got that flat tire, God. What did I do wrong this morning? I knew I shouldn't have done that. God's punishing me. You've heard that kind of stuff, right? Do you know for the Christian, that's not the case? One, another one of Dorothy's favorite verses is from Romans 8. and It says this, There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Romans 8, if you read Romans 8, it wonderfully assures us that while we are in the flesh, life will have its ups and downs. But God has an eternal purpose in the good and the bad events of our lives. One of Dorothy's favorite verses comes from this chapter as well. Verse number 28 says, And we know that for those who love God, all things work together for good. For those who are called according to his purpose. Do you notice what this verse does and does not say? It doesn't say all things are good. It doesn't say that at all. Matter of fact, there are bad things that happen, aren't there? It says that God works things for our good. Now, Dorothy had times that most folks would consider good, didn't she? Uh, she, she and Forrest were able to visit all 50 states uh, Forrest told me the other day they wore out two or three RVs in request to visit uh, different, different places in the United States. The one I'm most interested in, if you want to know the truth, is they floated down the Mississippi River on a barge in their RV. That was something I, I've never heard of before, and that would be an interesting trip to take. I'm sure they have lots of stories from that one. And those are good times. They visit Hawaii, they visit Alaska, they visit Florida, all kinds of good times. And those are working out for her good, right? But Dorothy also had times that most folks would not consider very good. For example, it wasn't good that she lost her strength, was it? It was not good that she lost her mobility. But God was working for her eternal good even during those times as well. 
She never seemed to complain. I never heard of Dorothy complaining. She may have, I don't know, but she was not a complainer. As a matter of fact, what I pick up and what I saw was that Dorothy was always focused on the care of others, even when she lost her mobility, when she lost her strength, and she had to rely upon other people. She never complained, focused on others, and I have no doubt that God saw that and he was pleased. And right now, he has rewarded her for that. And that's what it means, by the way, when it says God th- works all things together for our good. It's not a temporal here and now focus. It's always an eternal focus. Dorothy was one of the sheep of the good shepherd. As such, what was said about by David about her Lord is also true for her. You know what he said? David said this. He said, you prepare a table for me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. You know what? Dorothy is now dwelling in the house of the Lord. And she'll be in his presence forever and ever and ever. She can walk. She has more strength of mind and body and spirit than any one of us. She has more joy. Think about this. She has more joy than we can even conceive. And I imagine, I I can't think any other way. I imagine that she has already seen her first husband, whom she was a key in leading to Christ. Wouldn't you think so? That's how good our God is. But Dorothy's not there because Dorothy was a great person. Dorothy is with the Lord because of the Lord's great love. I'm reminded of the words of Paul. Listen to what Paul said in Romans 8. I am sure that neither death nor life nor angels nor rulers nor things present nor things to come nor powers nor height nor depth nor any else, anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. And that is the key. Dorothy is with her Savior because she was in Christ Jesus. And God loves Christ. And so therefore, he loved Dorothy with the same love that he loved Jesus Christ. And if Dorothy could give you one message today, you know what it would be? Come to Christ. Do not delay. Repent of your sin and believe on the atoning work of Jesus Christ. There's there's nothing more important in your eternal destiny. It's more important than having a good job It's more important than building your IRA. It's more important than living the American dream. Do you know why? Do you know why that is? Paul said it this way. Listen to these words. These are so important. We look not to the things that are seen, but to the things that are unseen. For the things that are seen Retirements, jobs, the American dream. The things that are seen are transient, but the things that are unseen are eternal. That is why Dorothy would want you to come to Christ. Dorothy is now previous, or Dorothy is now seen what was previously unseen for her. And for that, we can rejoice. I'm going to have Randy come on up here, and we're going to sing 
one last hymn together. We're going to sing It Is Well. close out the funeral with a word of prayer.
Once again, Lord, we want to say that we, we are thankful that we sorrow not as those who have no hope. We heard wonderful testimony of what Christ has done in Dorothy's life and what Christ did through her and other people's lives as well. And for that, we can rejoice. But Lord, there's going to be sorrow. Certain memories are going to flood back. And when those times occur, Lord, I pray the comfort of the Holy Spirit upon people's lives. And I pray, Lord, that they will be able to rejoice knowing that they know Christ, and therefore they will see Dorothy again. In Christ's name we pray, amen. That concludes the funeral service. We are going to load up and go to the uh, grave site and have the internment there. The, you are welcome to go to the grave site and uh, the family also would like for you to stay here at the church or come back to church or stay either way and have a meal with them after the internment at the grave site. It'll be in the alcove of our gym, which is out these doors and to the right. sinner lost and left to die oh, raise your head for love is passing by come to Jesus come to Jesus come to Jesus and live now your burdens lifted carried far away and precious blood has washed away the stain so sing to Jesus sing to Jesus sing to Jesus and live and like a newborn baby don't be afraid Sometimes we fall, so fall on Jesus, fall on Jesus, fall on Jesus, and live. Sometimes the way is lonely, it's steep and filled with pain. If your sky is dark and pours the rain, then cry to Jesus, cry to Jesus, cry to Jesus. can't contain your joy inside then dance for Jesus dance for Jesus dance for Jesus and live and with your final heartbeat kiss the world goodbye peace and laugh on glory's side and fly to Jesus fly to Jesus fly to Jesus and live fly to Jesus 
Fly to Jesus, fly to Jesus.